who wants to be a referee? And this was my past opinion. Who wants to be a referee? It's, you know, you're, you're the worst person in the world. You have stigma with refereeing. I think it's wonderful that we're slowly but surely changing that mindset um, and I think it's important because without officials there is no game um, and I know there's going to be controversial moments but let's embrace them because it's what entertains us, it's what we're talking about after the game. To see young girls, particularly ex-players coming out thinking, oh I, I have something else I can turn to post, post playing, I think it's a great opportunity and, and I'd hope think I'd see a lot more taking up the whistle and give it a try at least. Throughout my childhood I played various sports. I originally had an Olympic dream that I could go to the Winter Olympics for skiing and then when I played volleyball I thought it'd be for that. In college I started playing rugby and I loved rugby and I thought this is my sport, this is my opportunity. But then I got injured um, and what really helped with that was that I read an article that uh, another referee in the US wrote about all the opportunities that there are with refing and I thought that's that's the new thing I and mean, that's my opportunity. That's a way to like Stay involved in a game that I love so much and also a way that will keep challenging me um, and that's how I got into refing. So I played for Spain before became a referee and then I started refereeing in the World Series since 2014 and I have the privilege to referee the Olympic final in 2016 in Rio and now I'm looking after the referee as a development referee manager but also detecting the talent around the regions and the unions and create the opportunities for them to step in into the high performance level. It's really important to do some fitness session. It's recovery, conditioning and then anti-vector session because at the end of the day the referee must make a decision on their fatigue. So as a referee point of view it's really important the fitness level. Meetings are also very important on the technical aspect of the game because we reflect from previous tournament and then set the standards for the next tournament. So this is key for us as a referees. When I transitioned from player to referee, I found it very difficult because as a player, and I, I played with Ireland for over a decade, and you're told where to go, when to go, hand over your passports, what time to arrive, you don't even know what airline you're travelling with, you're told nothing and you completely rely on your management and going from that to my very first trip to Russia I found it really difficult and lonely and I had to deal with that and uh, become more independent um, but thankfully in the Sevens environment there's an awful lot more of a team ethos we try to help each other out through, through good times and bad and learn from each other and I suppose in a way it sits very well with me because it's what I'm used to from playing with, with the Irish girls for so many years. It makes my heart smile when I think about being part of this environment and being part of the family. Um, I mean, being on a referee team is exactly what I loved about being part of a rugby team. It, it's awesome to be surrounded by people who have the same level of like passion and obsession and you could argue addiction <laughs> to, this, to the same things. It's a cliche, the rugby family. And I thought it was a rugby family when I was a player, but rugby is a rugby family. Um, and you can come from different avenues, but I mean, we're all here for the love of the game. And um, I think it's, there's something really nice about knowing that, which I've learned since taking up the whistle. As an Asian American, it's almost like expected that I, I get a degree in engineering or become a doctor or <laughs> become a lawyer or do something that brings in a lot of money. Um, and it, it also almost makes me feel proud that like I didn't go that normal route expected of a, a Chinese kid. Um, and I don't really wear it as a badge of honor that I don't make a lot of money doing this, but I think it does really characterize just like how much love and passion that I have for the sport and that my community has for me and what we're all doing together. And because it's really special, so it's really worth the, the sacrifices or the choices that we've made. Who can say that they go to the best places in the world? Um, and uh, Carol, our strength conditioner today, before we did the, the, the Bronco, the fitness test, which you obviously don't ever want to do, uh, but you just have to get on with it. Turned around and he said, before we start this, remember, you could be doing a nine to five. Instead, you need to get through this next five minutes, put the head down. And I said to him, that was the most motivating line that I could have got leading into a hardcore fitness session in this humidity. At the end of the day, you could be doing a day job somewhere. So this is pretty cool out here in the sun. So think of that when you're hurting. <laughs>